In gun control news, the Michigan governor has signed into law a new red flag gun law, as many states have done. But of course, questions linger over how it will be enforced, under what circumstances, and when. So yeah, this is a problem, right? We want to potentially take people's firearms away, potentially without as much due process as we might, you know, ideally want. And this is a bit of a tension. And also, of course, gets into questions about the Second Amendment. So let's learn a little bit more about what Michigan has done in this state. Michigan has joined Minnesota as the second state in under a week that implements a new red flag law. After Democrats, of course, in both states, won control of both chambers and the governor's office. So as the parties have shifted in these states, and as Democrats now have the power in the states, both states have now passed red flag laws, the first states to do so since New Mexico in 2020, but of course, other states have passed them as well. The governor signed the legislation just outside Detroit, flanked by various lawmakers and individuals. Arizona Congresswoman Gabby Giffords was also present during the signing. The new law, also known as an extreme risk protection order, is expected to go into effect next spring because, again, as is very typical, states, when they pass laws, they don't go into effect right away, right? Very common July 1st, very common January 1st. But for whatever reason, for this particular law, apparently something like March. So I don't know why, but that's what we're doing over there. This law would allow family members, police, mental health professionals, roommates, and former dating partners to petition a judge to remove firearms from those they please believe to pose an imminent threat, which of course in no way could possibly be abused by some of these people who might have a bit of vendetta against the person and just want to make their life more difficult because they can't. But I'm sure that will in no way be a problem. The judge would have 24 hours to decide upon the order after the request is filed, which isn't a lot of time to consider such things. And how would they go about evaluating it? Other than, you know, just the naked, naked thing. So why would they say no? Right? So if granted, the judge would have 14 days to set a hearing during which the flag person would have to prove that they're not a risk, which also seems a bit weird that they have to prove they're not a risk. As opposed to them proving they are a risk, but okay. The order would last a year. So we would take away your guns and we'll pinky promise to give them back to you after a year. Although that will absolutely not happen. So your guns are gone forever. So fun. Michigan became the 21st state to implement a red flag law. Questions remain of whether the state will have better success in enforcing it than other states have had. Because other states have run into problems, including legal problems because of the Second Amendment issues, for, you know, many, many obvious reasons. You want to deprive someone of a constitutional right, you know, on someone's mere say-so, with different or less, or sometimes no due process. So, you know, that's a bit of a problem. The, you know, Associated Press found that in 19 states that currently have the laws, there were 15,000 times that firearms were removed from people, but that's fewer than 10 in 100,000 residents but still 15,000 times. So 15,000 times firearms have been removed in a way that might not necessarily comport with due process. So yeah, these laws have problems, lawsuits all over the place. Some local sheriffs have told the Associated Press they won't enforce the law if they don't believe it's constitutional. So setting up a potential fight within the executive of a state. So that should be interesting. Over half the state's counties have passed resolutions declaring themselves to be a Second Amendment sanctuary, opposing laws they believe to be infringing on gun rights. So the state is, to some degree, fighting itself on some of this stuff and raising all kinds of questions of how much does the state really want to do this, right? Because the state has ultimate control over its own state apparatuses. So the state can, if it wants, win this fight. But of course, that raises political problems as opposed to legal problems. So if the state really wants to come on and like, your laws are dumb, we, we are God, you will, you will bow to our will, they can do that. But do they have the political will to do that is a whole other set of problems. So we'll see how that goes. 
For those in law enforcement who refuse to follow these orders, let me say this loudly and clearly. I'll make certain I find someone who will enforce the law, the Michigan Attorney General said. Which, you know, okay, fine. You might very well be able to do that because, again, it's a matter of state law. So maybe you can find someone to enforce it, but you're still setting up a political fight. So we'll see how that all goes. Nearly half the states have passed legislation relating to gun control this year. But of course, there's a division among states. Democrat led states have enacted new laws to restrict stuff, Republican states have passed laws not to restrict stuff, including allowing concealed carrying without permits or for trained people to have guns in schools. So two very, very different approaches by the states. Earlier this month, two school districts in Michigan banned backpacks as a result of this firearms problem. So I'm not sure if that means all backpacks or you're just allowed clear backpacks or something. Because how you get around without backpacks is a, kind of a real issue, to be honest, if you're in high school, you know, and even college and stuff like that, you know, the backpack is key. So I'm not sure how we can ban all backpacks, but we're trying. The ban at the public schools came as a result of a third grader who brought a gun to the school, which is bad, but maybe leading to other problems. The red flag law is the final piece of legislation to be signed into law as part of 11 bill gun safety package advanced in the state. So the state is passing many, many laws for the gun control. This is one of the laws for the gun control. Safe storage and universal background checks, also part of the gun control in this state. So we are not, you know, avoiding the fact that we have all this wonderful power as state because we have a unified democratic led state level government and we are just passing all the gun control because we can. Michigan Democrats who are in control of all the state government for the first time in 40 years, of course, said the 11 bills they've already passed is yet but the start of their measures, because of course it is. This represents a floor for what we can do, the Michigan Lieutenant Governor said. And it is planning even more gun control, surprising absolutely no one. So the state is looking to, you know, push the Second Amendment to its absolute limit, other states going the opposite direction. All this, of course, leading to many, many legal fights in the future, including eventually at the U.S. Supreme Court for all this stuff as states go somewhat out of their way in some cases to push the boundaries, you know, just because they can. So leading to all kinds of legal fun in the future. Thus, that brings us to the end of the story of the Michigan governor, along with state-level Democrats who have together crafted 11 gun control bills, but this is but the start of Michigan's efforts. Other apparatuses of the state, including county-level authorities, such as sheriffs, have said that they will resist this. And so Michigan is on a bit of a collision course with itself. Of course, Michigan is sovereign, states and localities are not. So ultimately, Michigan can legally do whatever the hell it wants when it comes to counties and sheriffs and cities. It has ultimate unchecked control. But that poses not so much a legal problem, but a political problem as different parts of the state squabble over these things. Of course, turning our attention to the legal problems, even if Michigan has ultimate power over its own state, it doesn't have ultimate power over federal law, which includes the Second Amendment. So Michigan will have to contend with the legality of its measures as it's a matter of federal law, as other states adopt these and other gun control measures and seeing how far they can push the envelope. So the Supreme Court, again, Looks like we're going to have more and more issues going to the Supreme Court on gun control issues. Michigan teeing up many issues itself. And that for the moment brings us to the end discussion of this case.